the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. I just heard my telephone ping, so I'm turning it off lest something worse happens. <laughs> well, happy Independence Day. I can't really think of a more beautiful 4th of July morning. Um, you know, God is good. All the time. All the time. I learned that from my friend. <laughs> and we gather to celebrate the wonderful goodness of God in sending his beloved son to lead us safely home to God. Let's prepare our hearts to enter more fully into God's word and into this communion of ours acknowledging our own sins and asking forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, 
fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they who, to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Our response to the Lord's word is, Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Our eyes are fixed on A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph, and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands upon them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good all and all the time. God is good. Now I have a I have a trivia question to, today. What name, or what is the name of the famous dance in the year 1776? What is the name of the famous dance in the year 1776? It, uh, the famous dance name was Independent Dance. <laughs> So happy Independence Day to you all. Good. Some time ago, I visited an elderly woman and I asked her how she was doing and she spoke about her health, which wasn't very great. When I asked her about her family, she said that one of her daughters has stopped speaking with her and would, and would not even allow her own children to visit their grandmother. She said what was most painful was that she couldn't recall a single reason for this rejection by her daughter. So she told me it happened suddenly. Then recently she heard that one of her daughter's sons was getting married and while all other family members and relatives were invited to the wedding, she was not. She said that she felt even more terribly rejected. Isn't it very hurtful to be rejected by anyone? But it is particularly hurtful to be rejected by one's own people. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus returns home uh, to his hometown of Nazareth, having left there some time previously. And remember, he had spent the best part of the 30 years in Nazareth. And during that time, he was known by all as the carpenter, as a son of Mary. However, in the time since he left Nazareth, his life had taken a new direction. He had thrown himself into the work that God had given him to do. So he, he left Nazareth as a carpenter and he returned to Nazareth as a teacher and a healer. 
there was in fact much more to this man that his own townspeople had ever suspected while he was living among them. The gospel reading today suggests that they would not accept this more. They rejected him. They wanted him to be the person they had always known. They would not allow him to move on from that. So Jesus' homecoming turned out to be more painful than his living home. God's unique son, who proclaimed the presence of God's kingdom, was experienced by the people of Nazareth as a thorn in the flesh, to use the image of St. Paul from the second reading. And probably all of us have experienced a little of this. Maybe you wanted to help someone, but our help was refused. We feel frustrated and helpless. When we meet with rejection, we may be tempted to say, that's it, I'm finished, I'm done. We may decide not to help or care anymore because it is very painful. But Jesus did not react like that. He was sad but not angered. He did what little he, co he could in Nazareth. He cured some sick people. Then we are told that he was amazed at their lack of faith. So he decided to take his light and his gifts elsewhere. If you, if you go back a little bit, after the three miracles Jesus worked before today's gospel, we find him today teaching in the, in the synagogue. And all there were astonished when they heard him. One would imagine that it would, be, it would have been the most obvious thing in the world for them to accept him as a special person sent by God. But the opposite was true. They refused to accept him just as uh, they refused to listen to the prophet Ezekiel as we heard in the first, in the first reading. Now a question. Why would they have been so prejudiced against Jesus? Maybe they said, he's, he's one of our own. We know him. We have seen him grow here. He's just a carpenter, the son of Mary. Who, uh, who does she, he think he is? What is he telling us? So today, we are invited to, to examine ourselves. Have we truly accepted Jesus as our Lord? The Lord is inviting us now not just to be familiar with him. The people in Nazareth were familiar with Jesus and they remained at that level. So the Lord is inviting us now not just to be familiar with him but more importantly to be intimate with him to enter into a personal relationship with him so that like the Apostle Thomas whose feast we celebrated yesterday, we may also say with full conviction, my Lord and my God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
my Lord and my God, this Thomas profession of faith. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's offer our prayers now, confident of God's goodness. For Pope Francis and church leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide their decisions as they reflect God's love in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, our country, and in thanksgiving for the freedom that we cherish, we pray to the Lord. For the victims of the building collapse in Florida and all who continue to suffer, we pray to the Lord. For those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries during July and for all newcomers and visitors to our parish, we pray to the Lord. For the safety of travelers and those on vacation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, those in the hospital and nursing facilities, for all caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of financial help, the homeless and forgotten, the lonely, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, our sister parish, and thanksgiving for the many blessings that have come to our parish and for our benefactors, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Martha Madden, for whom this Mass is celebrated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, through the suffering of your Son and servant, Jesus Christ, you lifted up a fallen world. Guide us by his way, his trust in you, his confidence in your call to the eternal life which you have destined for us in the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song of preparation is number 323.
pray, dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you have come to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. <laughs> Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit.
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Ambrose, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's give one another now some sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
On Wednesday, July 21st, 2021, Bishop Paul Bradley will celebrate a Mass of Thanksgiving in honor of the Jubilee 50th anniversary of the Diocese of Kalamazoo. More details and RSVP requirements are in today's bulletin. We are looking for adults to serve as greeters, ushers at our Sunday liturgies. If you are willing to assist in this way, please leave your name and phone number with the sacristan or the, at the rectory office. Thank you. Well, today is the uh, first Sunday of July, and uh, we're calling this Celebration Sunday. Um, so I'd, I'd like to uh, catch a glimpse of any of you who are celebrating important anniversaries uh, this month. Some, it's possible that some of you might have been married in July. It's also possible that somebody here might have been, might have made their first religious profession in July. Anybody like that? Thank you, Sister Margot. Now, uh, now we ought to think about people who were born in July. I just know there's somebody here who was born in July. We need to stand up. Thank you, thank you. Let's all stand now and uh, let's pray the prayer to St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only son, in you Mary placed her trust, with you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us on the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Dear God, our Father, we bring our loved ones before you in celebration of their birthdays. Thank you for the blessings you have given them in life. We pray for your light and protection for them as long as they live. Help them to know how beloved and cherished they are. Look after them in the year ahead. May they know your peace and strength when they awake and your comfort and rest when they lie down to sleep. May their future be filled with hope in you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Amen. Our closing song is God Bless America. Amen.